Welcome to KGXT, Gen X Talks podcast live from Central California. Making plans with the boys. Gonna hit the town. done that's a lot of debt I know, go. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to gen x talks podcast broadcasting from kgxt studios 200 feet below occupied california how's that was that that good? was really good and it was to the point yeah yeah so let's talk about our our non-paid sponsor <laughs> marcy zavala <laughs> um i made a commitment this morning i've been hurting so much lately and it's and i'm 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 fucking it up. It's me. I got off of her diet. I started. I went rogue, as they say. Everybody does. You've you've been rogue a little bit. I went rogue a lot. Uh, yeah. I was having chili dogs, and I was having banana splits, and um, banana you know. splits. Where was that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Uh-uh. I didn't want to tempt you. Um, I haven't had a banana split in. Speaking yeah. of that, do you remember Ice Cream Ferrell's Parlor? Ferrell's, yeah. Ice Cream Parlor? Yep, I do. Oh what my was God. their what was their big one called? The Pig's Trough. The Pig's Trough. Or yeah. the really big bowl with all one of every scoop of ice cream was the zoo. Oh yeah, I remember the zoo. Oh, the Pig's Trough. If you ate the whole Pig's Trough, you got a ribbon. There's no way. Pig's Trough was set up for like 8 people. It was huge. It it wasn't that big. Your hands are like My hands like are out here. Feet. My my hands are off screen. No. Oh my god, I used to love that place so much to go there. Oh, well. Where were we? So we got it. Video. Good times. Um, so anyways, back to Marcy, yeah. yeah. And your diet. Uh, MarcyZavala.com, MarcyZavala.com, because I get paid five, MarcyZavala.com, you know. Um, <laughs> I did. I know that I've been hurting, and and I know why. Because when I start hurting and my knees start going and then I can't, it's a, it's the same downward cascading domino effect for everybody. And oh, yeah. it, I, I know it's. I know I'm just pointing the finger at me, but when I eat incorrectly, I begin to hurt. When I begin to hurt, I don't walk as much. When I don't walk as much, my fat ass sits in the chair. And then I get hungry and I want to eat more. So it becomes a, you know, I am restarting my diet. I'm still way ahead. I'm ahead on weight loss by far, but I'm having to reset. I've got viewers and listeners, um, bottom of the glass people have been texting me and emailing like, dude, get your shit together. Because as soon as I stopped updating my fat guy page, yes, everybody knew. Of course they know. <laughs> like, he's let not me give you. Let me give you a, a mechanic analogy. All right. You are provide. You are the car. Your body is the car. Yeah. You are giving your body bad fuel. What happens when you give a car bad fuel? Doesn't run right. Amen. Or, or doesn't run at all. When you give a really good premium gas in your car. The race car. Off to the races. There yeah. you go. Now do you understand? Yeah, I could take it one further. When you give a car bad gas, it it doesn't run right. It also makes funny noises. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of backfire. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what's going on? A lot of groans. A lot of gurgles. A lot of, yeah, a lot of creaking from the car, if you don't. <laughs> a lot of drips. <laughs> you know, okay, stains I'm, in the driveway. I, <laughs> No, I am not dripping and I am not leaving stains in the drive. You know, you, you took a you took a fun analogy and you went right over the cliff with I, it. It's still quite funny. <laughs> well, it's funny to you, but everyone's picturing me leaking in the driveway now. Oh, well. <laughs> there's toxic fumes up in our bathroom that, you know, that can attest anyway, to that. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I got I to gotta get my shit together because it's not only just, it's it's a health thing, but it's let's forget the health part. Let's just talk about... Day to day operations. Yeah, I can't it's endurance. do it. I mess with. I can't. You know. I want to help do stuff, and I have to make sure. Now, this isn't a big deal for me. I bring a chair wherever I'm working, because I'm up and doing stuff, and I'm like, okay, that fucking hurts. I don't want to walk 200 yards to a chair. I want to sit down for a few minutes, get right back in the game, and I'm doing that. But it's been. But I'll also give you another one is, yeah. and I'm sure all the mechanics out there, or 
workers, construction workers, your knees are shot too after yeah. so many years of being a mechanic. I mean, that's Absolutely. part of it. I weight is some of it. Weight has a lot to do with it, but also well, yeah, it's but just wear and tear on your people knees. People don't realize I have not been fat forever. This is a relatively new thing for me, gaining weight in the last four years. I have not been this fucking, I was a big guy, but I wasn't fucking fat. This is, <laughs> this is new. My knees were bad four years ago because... I was always young and stupid, and when I saw older mechanics putting knee pads on <laughs> to get under a, a dashboard or kneel down to do something, I never would. I'm like, fuck, I ain't got time for that. Come on, we're here making money. And I just get on the concrete with my knees all uh, the time. So what would you tell a young mechanic right now? Get a Young mechanic, if you're going to stay with this, wear the knee pads when you're down on the ground. I know it takes a minute to put them on, but it saves you in the long run. I didn't believe it, but it's true. The other one is, is that uh, to find boots that are super supportive and comfortable. Go to, go to a doctor, go to a pediatrician, go to- Pediatrician? Go to, no, what, not a pediatrician. Podiatrist? Podiatrist, yeah. That's what I meant. <laughs> and, uh, pedi pediatrician, You haven't seen a, pe a pediatrician till, since you were 18 and under, but- See, okay. that's what I'm saying. I should have known when I was when I was 17 about this, but I didn't. Uh, get your words right. Those are big $7 words, I understand. Well, that's why I don't get them right. I'm a three dollar word guy, and you, I'm using seven dollar words. It's messing me up. I get you. Anyway, go there's to a, a spine plethora guy. of words. What's that? Plethora of words. There's a, yeah, but I, there's a plethora of words out there, but I can't access them. <laughs> oh, okay. I can see them, but I don't know what they yeah. mean. <laughs> so go All to right. a chiropractor guy. Go to a, a spine guy where he says this is the support you need. If I'd have done that, then I'd have been good by now. And what's the big deal? Find out what boots are comfortable and work. Wear them. That's it. You're done. You do it one time. You buy them. You buy the same kind forever. Same with the knee pads. Get some good knee pads and don't look back. You used to have those like gel kind of knee pads. Do those, you remember those? When, when I finally got to a point where I couldn't get on my knees anymore, I did. Yeah, the gel ones. Unbelievable. How you couldn't you couldn't even feel like you were on concrete. I know you would used to love those. When you lose one of them, you were like, I was oh mad my god, because they were the, those gel pads work so good. Yeah, I was thinking on getting those for you for your marital duties because. Excuse me. I'm just saying I'm trying to help here, and you 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 not. You're... I don't need your help. No, that's true. You don't. That's... Thank you. Well, it's only if you're going to be on your knees for a long time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you. That's what I needed the pads for. So yeah, but while I was not on, while I was not following Marcy Zavala's uh, diet, <laughs> uh -huh. I had, I had the best shake of my life, the best malt. Is it a shake or a malt? What's the difference? Uh, well, I think shakes and malts are the same thing, except... No, they're not. Ex Can I finish? <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to jump my shit early. Except malts don't... You have a malt mix in them. Right? There you go. Okay. They're thicker, too. I'm going to say that this, the, this was a malt. Anyway, it was green like a shamrock, and it was, it was filled and blended with Lucky Charms cereal. Oh my god! And then they put whipped cream on the top, and they sprinkled the Lucky Charms uh, frosted ones, the little marshmallow ones, on top. Yeah, best one. All I want to do now, before I get back on Marcy's <clears throat> diet, Let's have one more. No, I want to have a big bowl of whipped cream, oh. and sprinkle, uh, pour uh, Lucky Charms all over it, and eat it with a spoon. Oh my God. And a nice cold glass of milk. Okay, then I swear I'll start the diet. Yeah, we've heard that before. <laughs> we've heard that before. So my, yeah. My my thing this week has been my favorite Easter candy. I can't. You know what? I have to say this, not to bring it down, but I've been thinking about my mom. Like my mom used to give me those Peeps, those marshmallow. Yeah, you love Peeps. I have loved Peeps since I was a little girl. And I always get a pack for Easter because I just do. That's just yeah. reminiscent of when. But my mom's anniversary of her death's coming up in a couple of weeks. And I've been just thinking about her and missing her and how, you know, even when I like right before she passed away or that year before she passed away, she bought me peeps, peeps for yeah. Easter. And it was like, even though I'm 50 years old, my mom's still buying me Easter candy. So. I just bought some and I just love them My dearly. My thing was orange peanuts around. I Easter. know. I don't think I've, oh, I'm trying I to just think got, of, I don't know why I got into orange peanuts. Anyway, so I've just had some peeps this last week. And so. So speaking of, uh, since your mother passed away, we're thinking about my health and that's not the main reason we're talking about this is death, but you know, you, you need to be a little more supportive of me. You need to tell me no once in a while when it comes to food. I do. Now you don't. Now you just give it. You to always me. throw back. Well, I can have this. Now, well, okay. See, don't I sound dumb? You sound dumb. So, Can I have this? Why do you always imitate me and I sound stupid? Why does your voice always go duper 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 when you? That's not how I sound at all. Not even a little bit. Yeah, you kind of do. You make me sound dumb, even with 
Smart you are. sentences. Sometimes you are. You act like you're 12. No, I don't. Oh, please. Yes. All men revert to 12. I keep telling you that. What are you going to do? You know, you're, you're not even thinking about this. What are you going to do if I die one day? You mean after the party? What do you mean the party? <laughs> We're going to have a party. Why is there automatically a party? after? Yes. After, no. I, I'm going to, after the party. Do you want to know what I'm going to do after the party? <laughs> after you die? Like, that's the first thing that's going to happen. Oh, look at you. Look where the camera froze on you. Oh, great. <laughs> Great camera work. All right. I don't think you should have a party at all. I think that's complete bullshit. But yes, after the party. Oh, I don't know. Clean out your garage. Sell your tools. No, no I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, oh. how, how are you going to survive? How are you going to miss me? How are you going to carry on in life? And all you've said is, <laughs> well, we're going to have a party and I'm selling all your shit. Those are the first two things in your mind. Yeah, pretty much. Oh my God! Never mind. You know what? I'm change change the topic. I don't talk about this anymore. This is this is supposed to be a heartwarming, sentimental moment between man and wife, and all you did was tell me you're going to have a party and celebrate, which means you're going to have people over. It's a celebration of life. No, it's not. You're yes, acting like you were a little too giddy about it. Then you're going to uh, sell my shit. You're just going to have everybody over and go. All right, any of his stuff in the garage? Cash it's, only. It's five <laughs> bucks a box. Fill your box and head out with whatever you want. Cash only. I'm done. You t- I'm that's through it? With you. Yeah. Oh, we're done with the podcast? I'm, well, I'm done with everything. I'm done with the podcast. I'm done with... Yeah, I'm, I'm through. Oh, we're out of here. Wow. Let's call it quits. Okay. What's next? I don't know. What's next? Do we have a, a daughter update this week? Oh, we didn't do one last week, did we? Yeah, I think we did. No, we didn't. I even wrote it down. No daughter update last week. It says so right there. Okay. Let's try that again. Say, do you have a daughter update? Do you have a daughter update? Oh, that's right. We didn't have one last week, did we? I'm almost positive we did, <laughs> even though you keep telling me we didn't, but I'm pretty sure we did. We didn't. I, I, I know for sure because I'm like, oh, shit, we updated about the kid, but not not the daughter. I so think you're wrong. The ongoing saga of the daughter is, uh, you guys know she moved out from a boyfriend. She's been home for about four or five months, trying to figure out a way to work it out to go back. Blah, 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 blah. Same old cycle. Ooh, your camera froze again. Oh, great. Um, Same old cycle. Yeah, so I will tell you that I did have a conversation with her. Um, and what I did was I told her that... First of all, we should say this is why you don't move in. <laughs> well, yeah, you, I, yeah, you, there's a lot of reasons to be cautious when you're moving in. Uh, this daughter, which you guys have been following along with this millennial daughter with her trials and tribulations of dating, and some of you have met her boyfriend at the Gen X Talks barbecue last year. Okay, but um, and he's not a super bad guy. The problem with moving in with somebody is our this particular daughter doesn't date and learn. And I try to tell all of my daughters that especially, but all my kids, dating is practice. That's right. Dating is go figure out, go on some dates, go out to dinner, go to the movies, go hang out, go to the lake, you know, go, go. See if you like what you're seeing. And ask questions. You know, you're know, shopping. Yeah, you're <laughs> shopping. You know, not on the first date, you don't say, well, what, what, what no. month of the year would you like to get married and how many kids are we having? No. I'm not saying do that. But along the course of dating, if you find out you like the person... Then it's time to ask questions like, well, how do you feel about marriage? How do you feel about kids? How do you feel about uh, drinking 18 beers every day <laughs> after work? You know, stuff like that. Right. But what a lot of kids do and what this one particular daughter does, is she falls in love very quickly. She falls head over heels very fast. And she goes from uh, dating to moving in within... Three or four weeks. Yeah, it's it's and a the, bad cycle. Bad, and she's bad, done bad. this. All of my daughters try to do this with me, even when they were teenagers. No, 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 Dad. It's okay. I want to date this guy. I, you know what? We've been friends forever. <laughs> you always tell uh-huh. me that. I said, okay. I'm going to marry him. Yeah, we've been friends forever. I've known him since sixth grade. Yeah. And then I find out through you or through the other daughters, like, Dad, they, they played at recess together in fifth grade, and then he moved away to a different school. So she met him in the fifth or sixth grade. She hasn't known him every week of her life, but that's the way my daughters come at me. They're right. like, no, 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 we've been, we've been friends for years, Dad. This is, it's time to, to move into a relationship, and it's, it's all bullshit. 
this particular daughter does the same thing. She says, oh, I've known him for years. No, you worked at the same place he was at. You didn't even have your lunch breaks at the same time. Right. So you, you saw him during the day. He was outside the building doing maintenance. You were inside the store doing stuff. So you kind of exchanged a few words and glances. Oh, and you saw him at the end of the day when you both hit the time clock. <laughs> and now you're going to pretend you've been close friends for years and this relationship is built on... It's not. It's They, they lie to me all the time about that. It's always this made up pretend, oh, no, 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 dad. And so she moves in right away. And after she's living there for a few months, she's like, so what do you think about kids? <laughs> eh, I don't know. I don't like kids. And then he comes back with, how do you feel about 18 beers every day after work? Because that's what I do. Then she finds all that stuff out afterwards. After she's committed. Right. So the the problem is, and I don't know if this is good or bad, is that when she moved out this last time with him is she was renting a room. She's 24. So you're going to live here. You're going to rent a room. She's 25. Is she 25? Well, that's your job to know. I don't need to know. Anyway, I told you, you're going to rent a room. If you don't want to rent a room, don't rent a room, you know, but you're not going to live here for free when you're a grown ass adult. You'd have to pay rent someplace. You know, it, it, it encourages them to get their shit together. And she moved out and kept paying rent. Yes, she did. She goes, I'm not sure if I want to be with this guy or not. Red flag. So I say, wait a minute. You're moving out, but you want to pay rent? She goes, I want to keep this room. I said, well, I don't understand. Now, you say she's keeping it for storage because she's got all of her crap in there. And I'm thinking this is having one foot in safe. Oh, it's a safe zone, too. So she moved in with him. It went for like a year and a half. They got in these big fights. She moved out. And now she's getting ready to move back. So now you're all caught up. I'm talking about her moving out again because she's getting close. Yeah, she's she's flirting with it right now. But what I told her, and this is the part, half of you are going to agree and half of you are going to disagree. What I told her was I said, look, uh, I kind of don't want you to move out if this isn't the guy. And she said, I don't understand. I said, look, listen, just quit this. I'm halfway home. I'm halfway out. Right. Right now you're dating him. And I don't like you dating him and spending four days there and three days here Pick one. If he and this is the way I told it to her. I said, "Look, if he's the right guy and you're gonna get married and you're gonna have kids and you're gonna have a future, go. Yeah, get out. Get out of <laughs> here. Quit paying rent here. Don't keep your pack up your shit and go." Mm -hmm. And she says, "Well, I'm just not sure." I said, "It's you've been with this guy over two years now. You it's you should have it all figured out by now. Absolutely. Is he the right guy or is he not?" She says, "Well." I'm working on him. And she's lived with him, so she knows all his idiosyncrasies. So you're either going to like well, him or not. Right. Like, and the problem is, she isn't. if I tell her, you can't live here anymore, or if I tell her, you can't date. If Okay, here's what. If I told her, you can't date him anymore. <laughs> you can't say that. Right. As the I, dad. Sure, because she's 25. But if I said it, yeah. if she came home from work and I said, hey, you can't date that guy anymore, she, w she wouldn't say... But he's the love of my life. He's the one. He's the guy. Dad, you're, you're taking away my future. This is going to be my husband. We're going to have a family. She would not come to me with that. No. She would not come to me and say that. She'd say, well, why not? Well, because he's not the guy. Well, but I'm working on him, Dad. I'm trying to, I'm working I'm trying to see if we're going to fit and be the guy. She should I ask every female out there that's my age and go, have you ever changed a man? No, no. <laughs> not no. once. Look, you guys can make little uh, course corrections with us yeah, for but... sure. Um, you can guide us in things, but you, we we kind of are who we are. And this guy's 10 years older than her. That is correct. He's already set in his ways. So the, the problem I'm having is I don't want to come out and say, once you move out, don't come back. Be sure that's the guy because this is it. You're not coming back. Well, you, you can't really say that as a dad. But that's what I want to say. Mm -hmm. That's how I want to come across. If you're going to move out with this guy, don't come back. Well, maybe you need to put a time frame. Like if you if you're going to move, you can't come back for another year. No, or I can't. I, mean, I, I, I can't. I don't know. What I want to say is, I want to look her in the eye and go, "If you, I want you to move out and don't ever come back here. This is your guy. Stick with your decision. You better be sure it's right because you're not coming back here." And I kind of want to see the look on her face. Well, yeah. And then I want to say, okay, I'm just kidding. I'm not really. But I, but I want to look at her and go, D did you feel that shock? I want to look at her and go, did you feel your heart sink when I said that? 
You know why it did? Because you're not sure if this is the right guy. That's you're right. not sure that you you may end up leaving this guy and losing your home. I want to shock her. I'm never going to say that to. I'm not going to you know cut my. I know, off but like it's that, like but. we can't have a revolving door every time she's in a relationship. This is not the first time she's done this with a guy. Well, no, and this is the thing I told her too. As I said, look, this is not. I said she comes back and has counseling time with you, and she talks with me about all the problems with this guy. So <laughs> we don't have to go through that anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to give you something very powerful you can use. Ready? <laughs> Write this down. You're going to love this one. When your daughters come back and say, this guy is this, my boyfriend is that, my boyfriend is this, my husband is that, my fiance is this, when they list you all that shit, talk it through with them. But when they're done, say, okay, are you going back to that guy? Well, yeah, I'm going back to him. Okay, so you know you're going back to all those problems. Well, yeah, I know I'm going back to all those problems. Okay, don't ever come and complain to me about those problems again. Why not? Because you know about him already. You're not going to leave him. And I don't, if you already, don't come back and complain. You're choosing this. You're, you're choosing. So all of those dads out there and moms that are listening in, you can say that to your daughters when they come back. Can you believe he did this? He cheated on me. Well, then why are you going back? Well, we'll work on it. Okay. Don't ever bring it up again. If you're willing to deal with it, I don't want to hear about it. That's right. You've accepted it. If don't you come back. back and complain about something you're choosing to go back to. Cause that's the dumbest thing. I, and you know, I've done that to one of our daughters before and she says, why not? <laughs> Why can't I come back and complain? I go, because we don't want to hear it. You come back and go, my boyfriend cheated on me. Everybody says, don't go back to him. And if you do, don't come back and tell us about it again. We don't, exactly. we don't care. You're okay with it at that point. Yeah, so I don't know what I'm doing with the daughter, but she's on the verge of making a decision. <sighs> I, just, I just don't think she's that committed. No, I don't think so either. She wants to have one foot in the door and play house, play family and... If it goes She's good. also very insecure. Yeah, she is. And she, you know, we've talked about this before. Our other two daughters got that information when I said that you've got to be okay with you. You've yeah. got to be strong yourself and be able to maneuver in this world. I'm not saying you have to, like, attack the world. and No, but... But you need to be able to maneuver and, and go to the doctor on your own and go to the store by yeah. yourself and go do these things. Well, you've and given our other daughters confidence. That's what it is. Yeah, sh this one is not. She likes a safe zone. So we didn't have an, a daughter update last week. Now we've had a really long one this week. I'm still struggling on how to handle this, but... Um, I'm getting close. And you think after raising 32 kids that have this figured out. I no. don't. Um, I, I'm, Adult I got a, kids are a whole nother level. Yeah. Too. And it's, it's, I got a lot of it figured out, but every kid's different. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was I going to tell you? I'm, I, I know something I'm, I'm, I don't like Google. <laughs> okay. I don't like Google in the truck. Okay. And I don't, first of all, what do you always tell me? You go like, you know, honey, there's a backup camera. Why don't you use the backup camera? Because I know how to fucking put a trailer on a hitch without a backup camera. Yes, dear. Okay? Yes, dear. I know how to get into the parking slot without a fucking backup camera. I've been doing it my whole sort life. Sort of. I, don't you say you said sort of? <laughs> and then the other one is, is that you're like, let me put the map on where we're going into Google Maps on the dash. I'm like, you fucking don't think I know where I'm going? I can't. I know I'm going headed crazy. North. What? Going crazy. Oh, yeah. And you're you're coming right along with me. Well, so kind of have to. Yeah. Married to you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I know I'm going. I've north. accepted it. I know I'm going to Sacramento. I know I'm going to a place in Sacramento. I looked up before I left what street it's on. So guess what? I'll figure it out when I get close, or I'll, get, I'll grab a map and look. I don't need Google telling me shit. And I just thought of a great story we haven't told people. Well, hold on. Let me. Finish I know. This. I'm so the other day, well, the other day it was a while. It's regarding ago. Sacramento. So go ahead. The other day, I went to. Uh, now it was, it was a while ago. Now you sent me down south of San Diego to pick up those panels. Um, oh yeah, for your for your the patio cover you wanted. So and the only place I could get them was there. So uh -huh. I drove down to San Diego, picked them up, and on my way back, remember I stopped and saw our daughter and our granddaughter, and we had lunch in an out burger. So I'm sitting at this. It was a kind of a confusing. It's right in San Diego, or it's just north of San Diego. There was an in and out burger, and the 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 streets and the freeway were really close together, and they were kind of confusing. There was a lot of a lot of streets with, within about. A half a block of each other. And I'm like, okay, which one Which one of these streets takes me to the on-ramp? It was like all, there was like seven side streets, but one of them was just an on-ramp. It wasn't really a side street. And I hadn't been there before. So I'm, I'm sitting at this light going, okay, I think this is the side street that turns into the on-ramp. 
I can't quite see it. And I'm sitting at the light, and I fucking put on the Google map thing, and I, you know, all right, I'm sitting at the light. And it says, in 500 yards or 400 yards, turn left to get on the freeway. I was like, God damn it, 400. And I'm, I'm first in line at the traffic light. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and then it goes, and I haven't moved. Uh-huh. It goes, in 100 yards, turn left to enter the freeway. I went, what? <laughs> I haven't fucking moved yet. And I'm sitting there. I'm trying to pinch. She recalculated. I'm trying to pinch and, and enlarge the screen so I can see what's going on. Of course, that ain't working. And then it goes, in 50 feet, turn left. And I'm like, I, ha- I still haven't moved yet. It's, it's a busy intersection. <laughs> it's not even my turn to move. And then it says, turn left now. I'm like, what? What the wow. fuck is going on? It went from 400 yards to turn left now, all in the span of one signal cycle. And that's when I punched the screen. I'm like, you motherfucker. What if I had what if I had darted out of line and tried to go 400 yards down the road? It would have said turn around. Yeah, it would have recalculated. <laughs> See, <laughs> that's bullshit. I you know, a good give me a good old Thomas guide any day of the week. The, the satellite moved, so it was a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> the, satellite, the satellite moved. Hey, you're getting closer. No, asshole, you're getting further that's away. Right. You're the satellite was moving. Satellite was moving. Satellite was drunk and moving. Oh, anyway, so goodness. I just Google's cool and all, but not not in the fucking truck no way i'm not doing that anymore i'll just i know where i'm going i'll get there you know what i'll do i'll even break the man code before i use google again i'll get lost i'll ask for directions oh wow <laughs> that's yeah. deep before i ask google i will roll Whoa. down my window and go wow hey buddy where's the in and out burger i'll do that before i trust fucking google again. just smell it just pick your, just put, your no- put your nose out the window. You'll be able to... That fresh salt air of San Diego was really getting to me, so I might not have been able to detect the Oh, burgers. I see. Yeah. So it threw you off, threw your scent off. Speaking of that, um, I don't mind the Google voice. It's kind of a generic woman voice. Yes. But I also heard your phone in your office the other day. Your Siri was talking to you. Yeah, and? Okay, why do you have it set to a, a sexy English male voice? Because I like it. Well... I don't want to be told what to do by a woman. Well, no one does. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought it was odd. I'm sitting in my chair, my brown chair in the living room, and I hear this guy talking to you, and I'm like, I know it's Siri, but it sounds like a, a real guy talking. And it was this English, sexy English voice. There's one yawn. <laughs> the over-under is six yawns per live or per podcast. She's at one right now. I've been doing really good with those. Shut is that off. yuck water? Yes. Uh, I lost my water. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't have the the blue water. Any- oh, that one. I'll take that. No, do it. God damn it! You threw it right at me. All right, <laughs> I got it. There's um, your water. Which one is okay? It's Crystal Geyser. I'm glad you don't buy Arrowhead. Arrowhead is the only bottled water I can't stand the taste of. Why? What is I don't wrong know. with it? It's always been bad. It doesn't matter. And Arrowhead, when I was a kid, remember remember Arrowhead and Sparklets trucks that used to go the big green Sparklets trucks that used to go around. I could drink those, and they were tasted really good. But Arrowhead bottled water in those little bottles, for some reason, has the worst aftertaste of all of them. Huh, interesting. And it's terrible. But I lost my blue water, so I have not been... Oh, my God, I know where it is. Where? Your chickens have it. No, isn't that the one that I cleaned last night? Because you brought in mud? Okay, it was an accident that I brought in mud. No, who puts their drink in mud? You put your cup in the mud in the garden. Kind of. And then you brought it in the house. Okay, well, think about this. If I sink, my, if if my cup is going to fall up, my, my jar, my whatever you call it, the thermos thing. Tumbler. Tumbler, yeah, there's a word. There we it's, go. It's, it's a $7 it, word, uh, I understand. See? It's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what I'm here for. <laughs> I do the $7 word. That's right. So okay, it's tumbler. The, it, it's the water holding thingy. <laughs> <laughs> it falls over, and your chickens come. If I set it on the ground, they peck at it, trying to figure out what it is, and they knock it over. Okay. So in your new bed, uh, your garden bed, it was pretty soft, and it was kind of wet. I just I just twisted it into the mud a little. It had like it had like, like beach sand. Yeah, it kind of had like one inch of mud. The rest of it was regular. Yeah, but you dirt. brought it in the house. Okay, that part I apologize for. Thank you. The, the mud had dried on the side of it. And when I finally went to, because the chickens couldn't pick it, couldn't knock it over, it was sunk into the mud a little bit. Chicken problems. See, this is all making sense when you look at it from a guy point of view. Does it? Yeah, this is why I Only a guy would know. Okay. All the guys are going totally reasonable. Don't want to lose your water, sink it in the mud about an inch. Every guy out there is nodding their head going, got it. And, you know, this. every guy out there is going, yeah, you outsmarted those fucking chickens. 
They couldn't do shit with it. That's right. Can't knock it over if it won't tilt. <laughs> okay. Now, That's guy logic for it you. Is, it's unbelievable. It's great logic. Let's just put no, it No, not way. really. But See, a girl would put it up high where the chickens won't get it, you know, putting it up on top of like the I've tried the... that. Your chickens can get anywhere in that garden. Oh, gosh. If they see something new, they will fly to the eighth step of a 12-foot ladder to see what's up there. <laughs> they do. Your chickens they go do. after everything in there. They do. They do. Unbelievable. So um, yeah. I kind of caught wind. Are we going to Power Slap in Vegas in April or what are we doing? No, I'm going to punt on that. Oh, we are? And I... um. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the the yes, uh, Frank, um, and I can never pronounce his last name right. Uh, he, I can't remember his name. He he is the president um, of of Power Slap, and uh, I've been talking with him on the phone. Damon, you know, Doctor McDreamy got me connected with him. Doctor McDreamy knows everybody over there. He knows all the higher ups. He knows all the executives and the owners. Um, he knows Dana White. He knows all of them. Yeah. And um, so he got me connected, and we were talking about stuff. And, and Frank did offer us an exclusive little something, something to help him do some stuff. But we're going there just to check it out. Yeah. We're going to go see where do we stand, where do we sit, what kind of access do we have as social media. And he was giving us some stuff over there. But if you ca- if you calculate, the tickets are five hundred bucks a piece. Ooh, yep. You calculate the rooms, the food, the gas. Kind of put the whole package together. It's going to be three or four thousand dollars just to go check it out. Now, I might have said, "Okay, let's go check it out and spend a few grand." And you know, we're in Vegas; we'll see some of our friends, and you can see the grandkid and do some stuff like that. But uh, I'm not even sure if we're going to commit to doing this because you know we'd have to fly Josh Maddox, who's huge, huge fan of this. And I told Josh, if we move forward, if we do this. We'll fly him out for these different events. We'll get him a room because he, he's going to participate in right. a, in the new Gen X Talks section of Power Slab. We're going to have a you know do a power. Then Trippy Pineapple can come up. The kid wants to do it, but now you're talking about four or five people going at five hundred dollars a ticket. Now you're talking about you know at least paying for trips, gas from Orange County, flying Josh out there. Now these events, even though they're not every month, they, they're once every two or three months. Now they're not three or four thousand. Now they're seven thousand. Yeah, it adds up really. And there's quickly. no way to recover that in views. There's no way to, to to put that out there. Now, if we had a sponsor, let's say we had a podcast sponsor. Let's say someone came in and said, "We're going to give you, you know, a thousand dollars an episode or something." Then I could take. I said, "Look, let's just take all that money and let's do the interviews with them." Let's put it out there. Let's put blips out there on YouTube. You could probably make, you know, seven or eight hundred bucks back. And I just, so I called Frank and I said, listen, I got to get the radio station up and running first. So does Josh. Josh is, you know, we, we got, we still got our work cut out for us with KGXT radio. Oh yeah. I said, told Frank, I said, look, I'm not saying no, I want to do this with you, but I got to put it on hold for a minute. Let me, let me get my feet under me. Let me get through, maybe let me get through the summer. Let's get the radio station up. Let's get everything dialed in after the holidays, Christmas and New Year's, right as spring start. Let's do it again. Just give me, just let me put it off a little bit less than a year. Let me regroup. Let me come back in with full force. I told him, this is what I told Frank. I said, we're not going to be social media people with a cell phone in the stands. I said, we'll do it right. We'll rent suites. We'll do interviews in our suites at a big dining room table with the, with your contestants. I said, we'll come in there with some gear, some real gear. And I said, we'll do it right. But I just can't commit to doing it. I'm, I'm spread a little thin right now. And, you know, especially when we just spent a bunch of money on that new computer that we got coming for this. I'm just, you know, you start counting up 2000 here, 3000 there, 4000 here. All of a sudden, you're, you're, you're $12,000 behind where you started. I, so I I told Frank that. He's like, no problem at all. That's good. So we're still in. We still have. It's still going to be in its infancy. But we just we got to just put it on pause for a minute. I got it. My grandmother would tell me I got too many irons in the fire. Do you know what that f- phrase means? Do you, do you know what that means? Um, no, can't remember. I had, I've heard it multiple my times. My great grandmother told me that she was almost on her deathbed, and I was twelve. And she says, she goes, "I want you to remember something. When you grow up, you you get too many irons in the fire, and you can't get anything done." And of course, at twelve, I'm like crying, going, "Okay, what?" <laughs> my grandfather, who I went and spoke to the other day, mm-hmm. I went and sat with him. Uh, he passed away in 2013, and I made the drive all the way to where he was, and I sat there. 
and I understood what that meant. If you have if you have a, a fire going and you have a bunch of irons in there getting hot, you get too many in there, the fire can't keep them all hot. Mm. The fire's not gonna it just won't it's too many irons in the fire. Your the fire's gonna get cold. None of them are gonna get hot. You got too many too many things going gotcha. on. None of them get done. And it was then that I kind of made that decision in my head. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna change it. So no, we're not going to power slap, but um, because we're still looking for property, you and I, um, we may still go to Vegas that weekend. Uh, Haywood Nelson wants to have dinner with us. Um, Dr. McDreamy's going to be there that weekend. I'm sure we can have a meal with him. It'd be nice to get away for a couple of days. And I, I would like to see, uh, we have, our grandson has a baseball game. That'd go be to fun to go to baseball game. We can see, uh, we can have dinner with our friends. Dr. McDreamy, like I said, he's going to be there that weekend doing that. Maybe we can listen to a little bit of what he's got to say after he goes in there and talks to everybody too. Yeah. So we may still go because I can take off and start going and looking for property. I was trying to find something outside of Vegas. I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to live in town, but I want to downsize our house and our property, but I want to move out. So that's one of the places we're looking. We still may go that weekend, but no, we're not going to participate in power slap seven. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> also, we're going to have to let a staff member go. Why? Who? What? Why? When? Trippy. Who? Why? Uh, Trippy's gotten too big for his britches. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Yeah, he's, getting, he's getting a little attitude now. He's oh, like, is he? He's like that wonderful son who's eight years old, but as soon as they get to 13, then they're a little mouthy. Yeah. <laughs> he's getting a little too comfortable <laughs> a little in his role in Gen X Talks. That's what I'm trying to say. Trippy's Does he have, have too to... much power right now? A little bit. Oh, he's on a power trip. Yeah. I. Th- he picks a movie, Storm of the Century, to watch on Discord. Every Monday, they, him and the kid do a Discord movie. Yes. And Storm of the Century, I'm like, what the fuck movie? Do-? I've never even heard of this. He's like, no, no, no. Stephen King, Storm of the Century. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's really not. And it wasn't. It sucked. Stupid movie. Did you see it? No. Then how do you know? Because I said so. If I haven't heard of the movie, there's no way it's good. Okay. We all know that if there's ever a movie of any relevance throughout time, I've seen it. Did you ever think it might not be trippy? It might be Sammy? No. Sammy blindly loves me and follows everything I say, no matter what. Maybe she dropped it in his ear and was like, no, hey. she wouldn't do that against me. So <laughs> Trippy goes in. Not only does he play Storm of the Century when I tell him not to, I put up on the website, next movie is One Crazy Summer, John Cusack, Demi Moore, 1986. And what did I tell you about that? You know what he showed? Storm of the Century Part 2. I understand that, but what did I tell you to stay I'm in your lane? I'm not lane? done. The next week I put up One Crazy Summer. This is the uh, third week in a row. Yes. You know what he showed? Storm of the Century Part 3. And come to find out from all of the listeners, they're sending me stuff. It wasn't even part one, two, and three. It was a made-for-TV movie at some point in life that that had three parts to it. And he shows all three. You know how many people were watching the movie when I looked in to see of this great movie? How many viewers? I have no idea. Three. Now, no <laughs> one of them was him. <laughs> the other one was his girlfriend, Sammy Joe. So I'm thinking somebody just left their left their Discord server on and was in the room not really listening to it. Three people. That's it. So I'm like, you got to stop this shit. He's so like, he's done. So so there's no more. Part three was it. I don't I don't know. Maybe this thing goes on for 12 parts. Who knows? Okay. It's but you're Stephen not King. listening. Okay, I told what? you to stay in your lane. I gave Trippy access to the calendar to put the movies on, and he's in charge of picking the movies, and he's in charge of putting it on the calendar and everything. You don't get to just walk in there and decide what movie gets put in. If you want to suggest a movie... You email trippypineapple at genxtalks.com. <laughs> you want me to email yes. Trippy to yes. request. Yes. Go through the channels. I, I'm Go ca- through the proper channels. I'm kind of feeling that I have a little bit of uh, ability to exercise some goddamn authority here. You know what? I should just declare martial law because I'm saving the viewers from oh shitty movies. Oh, my gosh. I'm saving them from poor choices. Now, I'm not sure how much weed he smokes or how much Jack Daniels he drinks. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure what medications trip he's on, but he's got to adjust it. He's either getting too much Here we go. or not enough. 
because it's it, there's nobody that would think in a public forum you should be showing a Stephen King made for TV movies from the early 90s, part one, two, and three, that got such low Nielsen <laughs> ratings they never showed it again. I'm sure Trippy's just rolling his eyes right now at you. This that movie was so stupid, it went from conception to VHS and they made three copies. <laughs> <laughs> and Trippy got all three copies. <laughs> all right. Well, you just leave the movies to him, okay? Stay in your lane, man. No. Did you see what happened? He just went over a cliff with the movies. How can I let that happen again? <laughs> oh, God. We're going to have to exert some martial law around here and get some things done. He uh, is doing great on Discord and and handling everything and uh, keeping he everything. He is doing an amazing job on Discord because he is so, Trippy is so busy with life. You know, and he's got his grandma he takes care of. He's got his work. He's just there all the time. And then he takes over Discord. He also keeps up the gaming hours on Facebook Blue for a Gen X Talks. And he does all the things in between. Yes, he I does. mean, he's, he's amazing. extremely busy. So to lighten so his load. So you can't let him go. To lighten his load, no more movie <laughs> choosing. <laughs> so you can't let him go. He's made himself irreplaceable. Irreplaceable. Is that a $12 word? Yeah, that, I don't know. Word. It is. Yeah, irreplaceable, indispensable. I get you. Um, I don't know. I'm just. I'm at the. I'm at my limit with Trippy. Oh, brother. I'm gonna have to sanction him. We're gonna have to turn in a. Have to give him a. a something's gonna go in his permanent file, as they said in school. Oh my gosh. All right, there you go. I'm so, done. So yeah. two things. We have to talk about my Sacramento story when you were talking about like using Google and stuff. Do you remember when we met in Sacramento when we were dating? 200 years ago. Yes, I do. Um, I was driving north. You were driving south. Right. And we were meeting in Sacramento. And what happened to me? I can't remember cell exactly. Cell phone died. Oh, is that what happened? We couldn't talk anymore with cell phone. And yours died because your charger broke while you were driving. And we hadn't picked exactly where to meet. No. And where? what did I do that you thought was absolute? Because we didn't well, have Google Maps. We no, didn't know no where. Google, nothing. There was no Google. You were surprising me with well, a weekend. Right. It was surprising. I said, hey, I rented this nice place. Let's meet. You come up for the weekend. I'll come down for the weekend. Let's just hang out together. And um, I, I had picked this hotel, and I'd shown you pictures of it. I sent you emails, but you didn't know where it was exactly. No. no. And I was talking to you and I said okay you're running out of battery where are you <laughs> and you kind of told me she so said I'm you gave me the mile marker you were at which was brilliant yes total guy move and you said <laughs> to my right there's four big radio antennas oh, with red right. lights on it yeah that's right and then your phone went dead yes so I drove until I saw the radio towers on my left coming down I got off the freeway came back but and as soon what as did I do Oh, you're going to tell the story. As soon as the radio towers, I saw the radio towers on my left. I went past them. I got off the freeway, got back on the freeway. And then when the radio towers were on my right, I knew you had at least made it to that point. So I started looking for you on the side of the road. And the first off-ramp I came to, I thought, all right, I'm going to get off here. maybe." And as soon as I got off, you were in the first parking lot right there. You got off. On the on no, I did not get off on the on ramp. Yeah, That's you what you said was amazing. No, I pulled off on the side of the road and I turned my hazards on. Remember, I was on the side of the road because I knew if I got off the freeway, you wouldn't know where I was. It was better for me to stay on the freeway. I was on the freeway. You sure? Yes, I'm. I was there. Well, so was I. And you said that was such a guy move that I didn't get off the you freeway now, you're, you're and right. not get lost. Like, you wouldn't be able to find me. You would have had to go off every off-ramp until you're you right. found me. I did. You did. You but pulled I pulled off on the side of the road and turned my hazards on. Just past the radio lights. Yes. I remember that now. I thought you got off on the... On, and I remember right. you walking up to the car going, that was amazing. Like That's right. It was a, it was a guy move because you're right. I know, you know what? I'm thinking of my grandmother who got stuck... She got off the freeway uh, when she lost her, her cell phone with my grandfather. Yeah. They were traveling to see us. Remember, she got stuck, so she got off. Oh, she got off and got went to it, the first the first off-ramp, and it had an In-N-Out burger, and she said, I knew you'd find me in that burger. Because <laughs> she stopped. That was my grandmother stopped there. You're right. Yeah, you did I, stop and put your hazards on, because you knew that I knew where you last were. Right. That's right. That was a guy. Right. Movie. And I just stayed on the highway. I figured I was better on the highway than getting off somewhere. That's true. I do. For, yeah. See, I have. God, I'm amazing. No Google map. We didn't use Google no, map. You did a good job. And I, I'm, I'm glad you reminded me because I was I got those two things mixed up. You're right. You were on the side of the road with the hazards on thinking, all right, if he goes back to where I was, he'll see me here. Yeah. And you drove up and we were just shaking your head going that. That's right. 
You just totally Couldn't were so proud of me. Of that. Yeah. Well, look at uh, me. I'm even thinking that you were going to get off on the off ramp and you didn't. I didn't. It was even my thought. Yeah, didn't. good job there. I forgot about that. So this last week you went and um, uh, talked to a friend, but also went and saw your grandfather. You haven't yeah. done that in a very long time. My grandfather's buried at Glen Haven in Southern California. Um, it is that Silmar? Yeah, it's technically Silmar. Oh, is it? No, no, it's more Lakeview Terrace, I think. Oh, I was going to ask you because I'm but not really they, sure. It's a really weird, bizarre way you get to this place. It's an old cemetery. It's like you have to turn in a neighborhood and keep changing side streets, and then you hit Cagle Canyon, and Cagle Canyon turns up to Lopez Canyon, and all of a sudden you're going up this narrow, narrow <laughs> canyon of these houses that were built in the 30s and 40s, and they're nothing. A lot of them are nothing more than shacks. Two lanes. It's just a two, two lanes, lane road. and then all of a sudden it opens up. And there's this big, huge cemetery. It's huge. It's like on a hill. Yeah. And so yeah, uh, the last time I was there was seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. And the place was trashed. Yeah. I was there for the funeral many moons ago. And, that was the last time I was there. And it was falling apart. I took uh, our daughter there and she had to clean off grandpa's gravesite because the grass had overgrown it. Yeah. And I was talking to my mother about it because it's her dad, and she said, nobody buries anybody anymore. That was the tradition back then. You That's always true. knew you were going to get buried. You had to have a plot. You had to pay for a plot. So it was this perpetual pyramid thing of more people will keep buying plots and reserving plots there'll always be money to maintain the cemetery. Now everybody gets cremated. Yeah, but that's expensive too. Nobody, I just went through that. <laughs> but nobody goes for the 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 burial anymore. No, and that but they're still getting money for cremation and they're, well, they're not breaking in bucks. They weren't. So it, it really was bad. When I went there this time, first of all, this big huge cemetery had flowers and balloons on almost half of the grave sites. I don't know what did everybody I wonder if it was Easter week. Or if everybody died on the same day. Maybe <laughs> everybody died on the same day. So everybody was having a party that day? I guess. Okay. And then there was twenty guys. Uh, with their jackets cleaning up. Nice. There were weed eaters were going and leaf blowers. There was uh, forklifts running around and there was a, um, uh, skip loaders moving dirt. I mean, it really, and I went over to where my grandpa was and it was cleaned up. Nice. They really made it, I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. The big sign of Glen Haven in that's built into that mound of dirt had all been cleared away. It really looked good. Maybe so, they changed owners or something. And well, now they got a grant from the state. You know, oh, maybe. Up. I don't know. But I sat with him for a while there and just got a bunch of answers. I, You know, I remember. <laughs> because he's the one that raised you, right? Yeah, he did you... a lot. He had a big hand in raising me. Uh, and not just cursory. No, no, no. No, no, no. Day to day. And I'll tell you, <laughs> somebody asked me, what's the first thing you remember? The first piece of advice you, you remember your grandfather ever giving you? And I remember what it was. This is going to sound so dumb. Okay, what? Uh, my grandmother used to have sewing um, groups that would come to her house. You'd pick a different woman's house. Your little sewing group would go for sewing and gossip and lunch at, at a different house every right. week. And so they had this, this that it was our turn at grandma's house. And my grandpa used to say, look, when they get here, go do something. Don't go in there and bother them. <laughs> Isn't that the typical saying? Yeah. I think all of us were told that at one time when friends came over or whatever. Go make, go get yourself, keep yourself yeah, busy. Children should be seen. <laughs> not heard. And not heard. So I did. I stayed outside. But then I, I went in and I remember I went in and went to the bathroom and came back. And I had to have been seven. And my grandpa pulls me aside. He goes... Listen, when you take a piss, aim for the back of the toilet bowl. It doesn't make any noise. You piss straight into the water, everybody can hear you. I went, what? He goes, everybody can hear you. And I looked around, and all these women. They heard you. They heard me taking a, a leak because you're pouring a, like pouring water in from a pitcher from up high. Yes. I was like, oh. So that stuck with me forever. My grandpa said, aim for the back of the bowl. So that's the first piece of sound advice. That was going to be the first of many with my grandfather. And that was, I remember that vividly. Man, I love your grandpa. He was, he loved you too. He I really love did. him so much. So yeah, I went to visit him, got some clarity on some stuff. He told me not to participate in Slap t 7. He told me, <laughs> make sure you fire Trippy when you get home. I mean, my grandfather's oh, wise. Oh, he's the one yeah. that started it. Yeah, he had I stuff. find that very hard to believe. <laughs> it's true. Very, very hard to believe that that happened. There's no way your grandfather uh, would say that. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Nope. Not happening. All right, let's move on from my grandfather. What? What do you want now? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. You know, when I was down there, I, I had to get something to eat. I had to go. I talked to a friend of mine, and then I um, 
and he, uh, came back and saw him, and I was grabbing something. He was looking for a place to eat, and <laughs> down in it's it's near the valley. There was a, a Mexican restaurant. I can't remember the name. It started with an A, and I looked at. It, I thought, oh, there's a chain of those down here. Maybe I'll stop and get. And I looked and I passed it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, another town later, I was going through, and, and there was another one. I thought, okay, I'll pull over. This one, it was a Mexican restaurant. It's not even like fast food. It's a little Mexican restaurant, but you can go up and get some takeout food, like Alfonso's or something with an A. Anyway, the sign out front, the professional sign out front on the street, it was a monument sign. It wasn't on a pole. It was built onto the ground. It says like Alfonso's Fine Mexican Food or whatever the name of the place was. Okay. And the bottom of it said, and pole dancing. What? Wow. It said It did not. It did. I swear I, I should have got no. a picture. I'm gonna I'm telling you, I could go I could probably find it on Google Maps right now, the street view, because it was right out there on the street. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. I'm gonna go it said it was Mexican food, Mexican fine food. That sounds like a fish story. I'm telling you, it was in red and white. You don't have any proof. You I had was, no proof. I was there. You're I'm, it. I'm Alfonso's or something with an A. Um I can't Antonio's? No, that'd be Italian food. And it said and pole dancing in pole dancing. Oh, I feel whatever. You're gonna make me go look that up. I'm telling you it's true. All right. Tonight's show, bottom of the glass nation show, I'm gonna find that. Okay. And I'm gonna if show If I you. see it, if you can show me a picture, then I'll believe it. But I don't know. You have fish stories like I will bet five you. miles How long. How much do you want to bet it's true? I'm not betting Why shit. That's because you're full of shit. Then put your money where your mouth is. Oh God. No. Because I just gave you back $100. It was my $100. It was in the laundry. I told you. You know the rule. If it's in the laundry and it gets into the laundry room, anything in the pockets is mine. Right. But I told you before it got into the laundry room, there is a $100 bill in my pocket and I want it back. Then go get it yourself. You you were already taking the laundry. No, you told me that like two. you've had two or three days to go into your sweats and get the $100 bill out. And I'm supposed to be thankful that you returned my money to me. Yeah, because the laundry got down to the laundry room, and once it crosses the border, oh. it becomes mine. Isn't that chick logic? I'm supposed to be thankful that you gave me back what was mine. Whoa, that isn't woman logic. I've never heard woman logic before. Because we're right. You're not right. You've- yes, we are. Those are the rules. The rules that you chose to live by. So do you want to bet on this or not? Because I'll, I'll bet you right now I'm 100% right. I'll find a picture of this. No, because I have a feeling this is not even connected to the restaurant. Pole dancing is like an exercise or something. It's probably another building next to it. It's on the monument sign. It's on one monument sign. That doesn't matter. Sign. It could have been the restaurant up top and the next place could be well, right underneath it. I didn't go it. in to see if there was pole dancing. I'm telling you what the sign said, and you're telling me it didn't say that. Now pick one. Ugh, I am not betting you. Yeah, you're not betting me because the last time you bet, you had to serve drink to all my friends topless for half an hour. That you wish so I well. did that. <laughs> That's in your dream, it you was, wish. Oh, it was 15 minutes. It wasn't a half an hour. But What do you want? What's next on your agenda? There's something else. Mexican food and pole is a real thing. Okay. What about the kid? What's going on? Um, you have an update on the kid? The only thing I want to say about him... And I don't know if I'm going to say this right, because I don't want to drag this out. When he turned 18, I tried to sit him down and say, okay, enough training, enough practice, enough fucking around, and you need to start getting some of this shit right. You're, you're, a, you're a young man now. You're not a child. And he's looking at me kind of nervous. And I told, every, I told this on the podcast like five podcasts ago. I said five weeks ago, I told you guys. So I did it again. Now he's like coming into 18 years and six months. I said, just letting you know, I'm serious. I said, you've been training for 18 years. Don't waste food. If you're going to waste food, I'm going to start charging you. I said, it's been 18 years. If you walk by a full trash can in the kitchen, empty it. I've been training you for 18 years. If I see you walk by it, I'm going to charge you five bucks. Oh. You're going to get this right, God damn it. And I told him, I said, we've been training for 18 years. If you're so stupid... You're going to make these fucking mistakes. I told him, I said, we've been training you for 18 years. Don't leave your clothes in the bathroom after you take a shower. He takes a shower, gets dressed, goes downstairs. He's playing with his dog outside, clothes. I said, I will take your clothes and throw them out. 
You've done that before. I have. And you, you leave. I said, it's 18 years of practice. If you're so dumb, you haven't figured it out. You don't deserve those clothes and you deserve to lose money. So I told him about the sales. You know, we took down your, your shade sales in the garden and I told him, I said, you're responsible for these when we put them back up after winter is over. I said, you take them down. When winter's over, I'm going to ask you to go get them. You better know where they are. I said, so just pay attention to what you're doing here. Fold them up, put them in a box, right with a pen on the box. Garden sales. So he goes to get them. He can't find the sale. He can't find the hardware. And I know where one sale is. He put it on the side of the house. On, he just laid it on top of the dog run. You know that little dog kennel we got over there that's yeah. made out of chain link? He laid it on there, and it blew away. Laid there for months. And then it, in one big windstorm, it blew over the fence, and it's gone. I told him, I said, you're buying another one. They're about 135 bucks a piece. I said, if you don't get it by now, I don't care if you're lazy. I don't care what you're doing. If you can't figure it out now, there's no more, okay, I'll, I'll get it this time, Dad. I'll No, no, 18 years of training. If you leave a soda half empty and I pour it out, I'm charging you for the soda. I said, you've had 18 years to practice all this. Now it's time to see what you're made of. And I've actually started charging him for things that are blatantly stupid stuff he should be. And he's like, now he's getting it. Now that I've actually said, you're going to go to the bank and give me that money tomorrow. He's, even if it's five bucks, drive your, waste $3 in gas to get me my five bucks. Mm -hmm. But he's getting it now. Now that it's starting to financially impact him, he's now paying attention. And like with the sale, he's still missing one sale. He goes, don't charge me. I, I, I'll find it. It's in the garage somewhere. And he did put it in the garage. I don't remember where. Well, that's but he's, he's now determined to tear apart the garage to save himself $135. Now, with him, if I'm financially beating him up about it, yeah, it, yeah, now he's getting it. Or, you know, when he, if he, he goes off with his friends and does stuff with in college with um, FFA or agriculture. And because he's in charge of their social media department now, um, as an ambassador, he's like, well, I need to record some stuff with them. I'm going to take a camera. I'm going to take a mic. I'm going to take one of our pod tracks. I go, okay, leave me a deposit. He goes, what? I go, this is $700 in equipment, $800 in equipment. I go, Smart. you put the money on the table. If it doesn't come back working, I'm keeping the money for what you broke. <laughs> All of a sudden, you should see him handling these things with care. Oh, yeah. I'm he used sure. to throw them in the back seat of his car and take off. Now he's packing them in, in blankets and towels with and putting them in boxes. Smart. All of a sudden, he doesn't want to be broke because he has spent so much money. I'll tell you a story about his, his work, his cut cone knife thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard this last night, but they, the, the, his boss says, You're going to be part of the $1,000 a day club. All of you, big team meeting. He says, There's three ways you can be part of the $1,000. Day a club, day club, and you know there's 12 people in this meeting. And they're like, "How? He goes, you can get someone to pledge a thousand dollars. They're going to buy some cut cone knives. You can sell a thousand dollars in a day of cut cone knives, or you can spend a thousand dollars. Either way, you get in with the plaque." So he went into his meeting and says, "I want a two thousand dollar plaque." And they're like, "Why?" He goes, "Because I spent two grand on my fucking truck <laughs> in one day the other day, and I want a plaque." He has spent so much money on his truck. Now he's mad. Because he has a front wheel bearing going out. Yes. And I said, it's no big deal. It's an old truck. It's got a bearing. Replace the bearing. And he's so mad at himself that he's got to spend another 150 bucks in this wheel bearing that he won't even call and order it. <laughs> he doesn't That's even what happens when you upgrade to a, a bigger car. And Well, and he races this Daytona around like he's Hot Rod Ricky. Fine. No tickets, but you wear stuff He out. really is a good driver, though. He, he drove me around the other day. and He is. But he's really a good driver. He's all of our kids are kind of hard on cars. They hit the like driveway. Like their mother. Yeah, like you. You hit the driveway at 12 or 13, 14 miles an hour <laughs> Not and skid to a stop. Not always. Always. You take off in a vehicle. If I build something, like when I build a truck or a hot rod and I let you drive for the first time, you put your foot right, right through the <laughs> fucking floorboard every time. Yeah, I noticed you have the uh, brake pad thing up on the dash to see how much usage is left on them. Yeah, because you're <laughs> driving my truck and I want to see what's going on with it. Oh my gosh. Um, again. What, what, you know, you moved, you have a little mini little studio up in our room now for yeah. you to do some yep. work in there and stuff. I've been hearing you do KGXT like little blur oh, yeah. things or well, whatever. I'm stealing some stuff from those of you that grew up in, the, in Southern California. 
uh, KLOS Radio. Yeah. Was a big. What are you doing? Big, You're stealing. I'm stealing stuff. some stuff from them. Okay, I stole. Okay. I'll, I'm doing blurbs for the radio station, the radio station that you guys are listening to right now. Uh, KLOS used to have a jingle, a little blurb they put between songs. Ninety-five point five KLOS. Turn tune in your radio and rip the knob off. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yeah. Because back in the day when cars had a knob, you couldn't you couldn't tune to a new station if the knob was missing. That is true. I get it. I understand. Okay, so, so what are you up to? <clears throat> oh. oh, sorry about that. Hang on. I'm dying over here. <laughs> <coughs> She's You're not have, staying hydrated. I'm dying. She's going to have the party tomorrow. Woo! <laughs> um, Can I have your stuff? No, you can't have my stuff. Damn. What the hell? Anyway, yeah, so I recorded, you know, KGXT radio, dial it in and rip the knob off. That was one. And then do you remember when Pirate Radio started in, in Southern California? Yes. They got the they took over this radio station that was failing. They didn't have a sponsor. They had enough money to license and run the run the program for like a year while Pirate Radio tried to get sponsors. So one of their blurbs was Pirate Radio. Our ratings are so low, nobody cares what we play, <laughs> which was true. Oh, my god! Nobody gosh. cared. They came in at the bottom of the heap, and they so they played whatever cool music they wanted to. So I did. I recorded a couple like that, you know, KGXT Radio. Our ratings are so low, nobody cares what we play. And one of them says, KGXT Radio, free music all day. That means I'm paying for this shit. <laughs> Some stuff <laughs> like true. that. That's true. So I sent those to Josh, but those are the little radio station things that was That's recording. cool. In the it, now that we have that mini thing at my desk, I can just knock yeah. All of out. a sudden, I can hear your voice talking. I'm like, who <laughs> is he talking to? There's nobody upstairs. So I want to try something with you. Oh Lord, it's new. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Makes me nervous. Um, there's a thing that I picked up on the internet, and then our, actually, I shouldn't say I found it. One of our fans sent it in for the specific use of a podcast. It's a game called You Not You. Okay, why am I always the person that's has to play the game because you didn't you didn't find the game okay you don't know the rules all right what are the rules what all do i have you, to do i'm gonna ask you a question uh-huh and you just have to answer you or not you okay. now i will be fair with you i'm gonna ask you like eight questions this thing had like 30 okay but they were some they were kind of heavily on the sexual side not all of them but some of them were Okay. And your answers are you, just you, not you. So let me just ask you these. So I don't have to expand. All nope. I have to say is not me. No, nope, me. You go, if I say, you know, who's the tallest guy you've ever dated? And you go, not you. Because there was a guy you dated taller than me. If I was the tallest guy you'd ever dated and I say, who's the tallest man you ever dated? You go, you. That's your only answers is you uh, or not you. you. you don't okay. Even, okay. All right. So this is from the viewers. It's it's personal. It's all personal. No kidding. <laughs> And I'm leaving out for the moment the sexual ones. All right. Oh, thanks. First kiss. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to say it. Hey, you asked a question. Well, you're saying it with you. such deliberate lady, like, hey, not you, big boy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you can. You know, you I play them all. I'm in the rules. I play. You can just. What do you want to say? Not you. You could say it's sad, like, oh, it wasn't you. Not you. Not but you, big you boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. What's My next? God, this is going to be a long eight questions. All right. I don't have to expand. No, I, I know. I think it all said it, it said it all in those two it words. It did. You said it with the tone. It's like, okay. <laughs> go ahead. Next. Best single kiss ever. Not you. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Wow. We're going to have a little talk after the show's <laughs> over. I'm going to lock the studio door. Uh, the strongest man you've ever dated. You. Best date ever. You. Worst date ever. Not you. You're sure? Good. Positive. Because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, smartest person you've ever dated. A crickets for a minute. I have to think. Um, Smartest person you've ever dated. You. Guy your your parents hated the most. You. <laughs> <laughs> what? You. Okay, I know some of the guys you dated. They had to have been hated more than me. <laughs> no, I know. Are you serious? You, no, you were trouble. 
My you, dad even knew you were you, trouble. You're, you got him. Your mother loved me. She adored oh, me. Oh, my mom loved you. My dad didn't like you. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's the... That's, that's it? Well, there's the... It's first sex. Ugh, go ahead. First... I don't care. Sex the first time. Not you. Best sex time. You. You better say that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want a hesitation. You know what? I don't care if you have to lie... <laughs> Even if you're lying, that I'm okay with that. If you're going to lie to me, go ahead. Hey, all us girls fake it one time or another. You've never faked it with me. I could tell. That you know? I would know. <laughs> you would not know. Yes, I would. No. No girl, including you, has ever faked with me in sex. I yeah, well, keep dreaming. <laughs> Are you keep saying, that thought. You saying you have with me? Of course. What? No. <laughs> uh, I move would, on. Next question. That's, that's all next I'm asking. Next question. That's, Okay, cool. That's it. We'll continue, right. or you can do you or not you next week. You know, if you don't erase it, you can ask the questions next week. Okay. You'll probably erase it, though. All right. Well, do you have a car story this week? We're, I do, but I, I want to tell you far... something. I've switched from alligators to gorillas. Oh, gosh. Now what? I just wanted you to know that, you know, my little thing about I'm looking. Are you, are you related by family? Okay, that was <laughs> uncalled for. <laughs> yeah, oh. only by marriage, though. <gasps> oh. Oh. Have you seen your brother? Shots fired. What? He's a little (laughs) ape-like. Shots fired. Um, I switched from looking at videos primarily about alligators to gorillas, and I think some of the best videos I've ever seen are silverback gorillas playing with their babies. Those baby gorillas just chew. They chew on their ears. (laughs) They slap around. Those big old gorillas don't do anything. I know. And then I saw this one, and it was a big zoo setting. This mama... And her baby were sitting with the dad, and the silverback was just sitting there, and the mom was doing all stuff with the baby. She goes to walk off, and this other silverback gorilla comes over and grabs her. Oh. And this on camera. And the father, who just was sitting there quiet, roars up like King Kong, flies over there, lands on, on the pile of all of them, pushes the baby out, pushes the mama out, and then wrestles this fucker to the ground and he's got him in it by the throat. <laughs> And wow. I was like, holy Santa Claus shit. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, f- I'm fascinated right now with chimpanzees and gorillas and how they, oh, this other one, um, this baby was born in the zoo to this to, to a female gorilla, full-size gorilla. Well, I hope it was a female gorilla. And she <laughs> left it and it was dead. Oh. And she cried and she whimpered and the, and the zoo people came in and pulled the baby out, revived it. They got it back, they, you know, because it was just like, couldn't breathe or something they quickly got it and fixed it put it back where it was and the mother came back in and was still whining and crying and then the baby stuck its hand in the air (gasps) and she raced out of this blue blanket and she races over and grabs this thing and scoops it up and she's just just screaming in the air like she's happy because the baby started moving so it was i had no idea they had that level of intimacy intelligence bonding I, it's just it, it's my new favorite thing. Have you ever gone to the zoo and like saw them up close, like through the glass, and yeah. they look at you like they know what's going on. They know. Yeah. Their eyes dart from side to side, like they are smart as shit. Like they are like paying attention. Yep. They this, could see into you your soul. You see the soul. one where the gorilla came up to the glass and told the lady to open her purse. No. Oh. He, she's standing there, and he taps. He comes all the way up to the glass and sits down and taps. And she goes, "What?" And he taps. And she goes, "My purse." And she taps. And then she pushes the purse up against the glass. He shakes his head no and taps. <gasps> and he goes, and she so she opens it and he taps again until she showed him the inside. Then he stood up and looked inside and she brought stuff out. That's all he wanted was to see what was in the purse. Then he left. That's but he incredible. kept doing it. He's like, You're not getting this. God, you're stupid. You're a stupid human. <laughs> it's charades. <laughs> it was it's I have switched. I'm alligators are stupid now. And now I'm all about the gorillas, just so you know. Okay. You're watching a lot of social media. But a lot only the of good videos. Stuff. Oh, only the good stuff. Well, you know, you get you did you got mad when I was watching porn all the time. I switched over to YouTube. You're not happy with that either. You're just like every other woman I've ever met. Look, you can tell me what oh, to do. Oh gosh. Listen up. You can tell me what to do or you can tell me how to do it, but you can't tell me both. That's the rule. Okay, same works over here too. Okay, no. No. So, ah, if you're gonna state a rule. Okay, let's It just goes get, both ways, big what'd boy. You want, what'd you want to hear? A car story. We got to um, end with this car story. What do you have? Come on. Dig in deep. Okay. Your camera froze again. Hang on. 
I don't know why it's doing this. Fucking goddamn piece of shit PCs. Get a PC. Go to PC. Keep going. Um, I Our worked, story. I worked for U-Haul, 7-Eleven company in San Fernando Valley in the mid-80s. And I'll add two stories. I'll tell you one. Um, they began for a short time U-Haul. It, I guess it was in 84-ish. They began to rent motorhomes. They thought this is going to be, you know, U-Haul already rents trucks and trailers uh, and haulers. They said, we're going to get into the motorhome business. So they went out and they bought a bunch of Southwind motorhomes made by Fleetwood. I'm going to say it was 84. And they only did it for three or four years. And then they got out of it because people would trash them. Mm. I mean, trash it. They don't know how to drive a motorhome. So they were running into stuff with the back of it, the sides of it. They were getting all dinged oh up. Oh, my God. And they finally, you all said, okay, clearly this is something you have to be better at. They already had that problem with their trucks. But at least with a truck, you kind of know how to drive a truck already. Motorhome, whole different thing. And for those of you that haven't ever driven a motorhome, just trust me. It's, it takes a minute to figure it out. And um, this was actually in the newspaper. You, you probably saw this in high school. It made, the, it made the news all over Southern California and L.A., so we're cleaning up these Southwind motorhomes, and um, they had me do walkthroughs. Um, and they would have me go out there, and I was a kid, 84, 85, I was, what, 16, 17 years old. But I was good at articulating things with people. So they'd say, hey, get out there, and um, they're going to rent this motorhome. You know, go show them how everything works. All right. So I do that all the time. And then I would tell people, you know, if you're not sure where you're going, don't get down on roads that are one-way roads and get stuck. And if you're not sure about turning a corner, swing wide. Yeah, I just give them the stuff. Because I'm learning people don't know how to drive motorhomes. <laughs> so this Japanese family comes to rent this motorhome. Or maybe they were Korean. I think they're Japanese. Asian. They were Asian. And, uh, Pick one. <laughs> I can't say Oriental anymore, right? No. Okay. They're Asian. And... Uh, so they, they, there must have been 12 people in this family. And there were several grown men and several grown women, then a bunch of kids and a bunch of younger kids. And they're all following me around. And one of them kind of speaks English. Okay. And they're trying to, they have, one of them has like a book of interpretation. Oh, and as I'm saying stuff, this is how the propane system works. This is how your refrigerator works. You know, this is how your hot water heater works. Here's how you open and close your awning. You know, and I'm going through all this. They're not getting it at all. I can do a walk through one of those things in about an hour, and it took me three or four hours. They were not getting it. And I don't explain the truck part. I don't say, here's where you sit. This is the steering wheel. This is where the ignition goes. I never even cover any of that. I don't, never at all. It's always about how the motorhome portion works because they never get it. And it's new to them. They're renting it. So they, there's, they rent this thing. And I thought they had rented it for probably a week or two. And they were gone maybe three days. And this motorhome gets towed back to a 7-Eleven company. You had all the little U-Haul dealerships. But right behind Anheuser-Busch was their big repair center where if, if a truck got into a wreck or it needed a big engine job or something. So this was just a yard of hundreds and hundreds of these U-Haul trucks. And I was down there for something. This motorhome gets towed in, and it's smashed to shit. I mean, this motorhome is crushed and crumbled, and I'm like, holy shit, what the fuck happened there? Yeah. And then it was in the newspaper the next day that this Japanese family that had rented this from us on Sepulveda had got everybody loaded up all their gear and taken off down the highway, and the dumb fucker in the driver's seat got the thing up to like 65 miles an hour and hit the cruise control, and it worked. Cruise control worked. And he got up and left the driver's <gasps> seat. And it went right off the edge of the cliff. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, right over the edge of the road, right off the highway. What? Yeah, it was in the newspaper. that they're, And they were going to sue U-Haul. And they come to me. These guys came to me. They actually had reporters track down the place it got rented from, track down the manager, tracked, and someone said, oh, and that kid over there was the one who gave him the walkthrough. Oh, I'm like no. 17, and these reporters come and say, oh, so you're the one who told them cruise control would work on the steering wheel, too? And I went, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, God. And they were trying to pin me down. They wanted me to say that I explained. I said, first of all, I don't explain how the steering operation works. Not the gear shift, not the key. I don't, do, I don't even tell them how to use the fucking radio. And I said, if you're so fucking stupid, you don't know that cruise control only 
works with the gas pedal. If you're so dumb, what the fuck are you doing even it's driving a car? It's not autopilot. You know what I told them, too? This is why I think they were Japanese. They said, I'm sure the fucking Japanese invented cruise control. Oh. So if those fuckers didn't know how cruise control worked, blame them, not us. <laughs> huh? And I got out of it because I didn't. I never told him how that worked. Those guys went right over the fucking edge. He got up and walked cruise control, got up and walked away. And it was shortly after that, that and another incident where uh, a, a bunch of college guys rented five motorhomes and just thrashed him like, like a rock star in a hotel room. Thrashed him. Oh, my God. And brought him back beat to shit and said, well, we paid for the insurance. We paid the $12 insurance. So you fix it. And that's Jeez. when you all decided we're getting out of this. But I'm sure that one of the defining moments was that those Japanese and Asian guys going right over the fucking cliff. And I remember it so vividly because I saw the motorhome before and after. And then those reporters trying to, you know, get the gotcha moment. <laughs> but even at 17, I was very much like I am now. I was like, go fuck yourself. Hey, you shouldn't even have been renting that fucking thing, you dumb idiots. And oh, I mean, my goodness. They didn't print all my cussing, but they had a... U-Haul representatives say they had no business renting a motorhome. I'm like, you goddamn right. It was right. costing them more money. Well, yeah, so there's my there's my automotive story. The guy thought cruise control it was on cruise control, man, to steer the wheel. Unbelievable. You know, it's, we're, that was 84. What are you, 40 years later, we barely have cars that will self-drive right now. And that idiot thought that was a cool way to go back in 84. Yeah, I thought a motorhome was different. <laughs> yeah, oh man! Okay. Yeah, well those uh, those south winds don't do well when you roll them down the uh, hill. I'll tell you. Can't even imagine. And they were all okay. I, you know what? I remember everybody was okay. I mean, they banged up a little bit. Nobody died. Nobody was paralyzed or anything. I don't remember hearing that there was oh any. Oh my serious god! They're injuries. lucky. They're so um, lucky. Yeah, they're lucky. Well, it, it didn't go over a cliff like. I know what you're saying. It, it like sounded, over an embankment or yeah, something. Yeah, just went over an but embankment, still. but it was like ten feet or twenty feet or something. But yeah. it still rolled. Yeah, and they don't hold up together when they roll. No, over. you remember that one we saw in Vegas, the trailer? We were driving to Baker. You, we weren't even to Baker. You called it. And I said, we're all of a sudden we're in this traffic jam, and I'm looking up there, and I go, that looks like somebody hit a motorhome or hit a travel it trailer. Explodes. And sure enough, this travel trailer had changed lanes, and this guy was racing down the road like at 150 on his way to Vegas in a pickup truck and hit the back of this travel trailer, and it exploded like... Like a box of toothpicks. Yeah, they're not solid. When you went, I go, you watch up here. And she, well, you were like, well, but if it runs in, I go, wait till we pass it. We're not even there yet. But that's what it looks like from this distance. You couldn't believe there was nothing standing. No, and the clothes were all over. It was just like it exploded. But you couldn't even tell. All you saw was the the trailer itself, the metal part and the floor. Yeah. Every, all the walls, the ceiling and everything, everything was were, gone. Were pieces all over the road. Yeah, it was gone. Yeah, so there's your story. So. Oh my goodness. You did good. You only yawned three times and how three? long? Three. Yeah, I counted. You snuck them in there, but I counted them. You liar. How many, you want me to find that on the internet too? Mexican food pole dancing and how many times you've yawned. Sure, yeah. I'll go look all it up. Liar. How long have we been on? How long have I, since I pressed record? Hour and 17. 125, but we did have some time before of you. I'm dancing. not bad, huh? No, that's really pretty good. That's right. All right, is there say anything that again. Else? I'm not saying that out loud again. Come on. You see, even with this PC thing, your camera froze like seven times. I fixed it. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck was that for? It looked even funnier that's... on film. Uh, but... uh, 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 uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to post, I'll post the audio. This is a good enough video one. I'll post this to you. I wonder how many people we have on the radio watching or listening to us. Watching us. Watching on the radio. <laughs> how many people are watching on the radio? Well, which is why you really need me in your life. <laughs> Save you from such embarrassing moments. I would say we have thousands and thousands. I always hope. I always dream. Well, do you remember when we first started doing Facebook live streaming like three years ago? We were happy to get 17 people. Yes, we were. We were like, dude, there were 17 people that took time out of their day. They want to listen to us? us. I see Josh is telling us how many people are in there. I, I can already see it, Josh. I'm how just many? Not, it's so low, I don't want to say. Ah, okay, and let's Josh not say. Josh is like, I'll tell you how many I'm looking right now. And I'm like, I don't. I already know. I just don't want to tell anybody. That's all right. Our ratings are so low, all right. nobody Goodbye, cares. Goodbye, everyone on the podcast. Love you, and thanks for spending another week with us. All right, so that's it. going to close everything out on the podcast, on the video and the audio. We'll turn down the radio in a second. Those of you listening to KGXT Radio will continue to talk a few minutes after the podcast is over. Thank you guys for tuning in. Not sure where you're listening in from around the planet, AM, FM, Sirius XM, or perhaps you tuned in on the Armed Service Radio Network. Remember two things, wherever you go, there you are. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Here's